The Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Family Theater, starring Miss Ethel Barrymore, the Mitchell Boy Choir, and the music of Meredith Wilson. Charles Boyer is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Good evening. This is Charles Boyer. As your host for this evening, I should tell you something about family theater and a story you will hear tonight. Therefore, if I may, I would like to remind you that family theater is dedicated to your family with the hope that your family would always be happy. As you probably know, many of us in all phases of the entertainment industry join with so many of you in the sincere belief that a happy family is a family that acknowledges God and seeks his help. To put it another way, a family that prays together, stays together. Now, about tonight's story, there is very little that can be added to its own great words. It is the passion, death and resurrection, adapted especially for radio by John Slott and narrated by Miss Ethel Barrymore. In these days of a slow dawning toward a new world of peace, we need the old words to guide us. And what greater words can we thus express for this festival day than the words of the passion, death and resurrection? when Jesus has ended all these words, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days shall be the Pasch, and the Son of Man shall be delivered up to be crucified. Then were gathered together the chief priests and ancients of the people into the court of the high priest who was called Caiaphas. And they consulted together that by subtlety they might apprehend Jesus and put him to death. But they said not on the festival day, lest perhaps there should be tumult among the people. When Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, they came to him a woman having an alabaster box of precious ointment and poured it on his head as he was at table. And the disciples seeing it had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this might have been sold for much and given to the poor. And Jesus knowing it said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For the poor you have always with you, but me you have not always. For she in pouring this ointment upon my body hath done it for my burial. And I say to you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, that also which she hath done shall be told for a memory of her. Then went one of the twelve who was called Judas Iscariot, to the chief priests and said to them, what will you give me and I will deliver him unto you? 
but they appointed him 30 pieces of silver, and from thenceforth he sought opportunity to betray him. On the first day of their zims, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where wilt that we prepare for thee to eat the pash? But Jesus said, Go ye into the city to a certain man, and say to him, The Master saith, My time is near at hand. With thee I make the pass with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus appointed to them, and they prepared the pass. But when it was evening, he sat down with his twelve disciples. And whilst they were eating, he said, And I say to you that one of you is about to betray me. And they, being very troubled, began everyone to say, Is it I, Lord? But he answering said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, he shall betray me. The Son of Man indeed goeth as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man shall be betrayed. It were better for him if that man had not been born. And Judas that betrayed him answering said, Is it I, Rabbi? He saith to him, Thou hast said it. And whilst they were at supper, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke and gave to his disciples and said, Take ye and eat. This is my body. And taking the chalice, he gave thanks and gave to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which shall be shed for many unto remissions of sins. And I say to you, I will not drink from henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I shall drink it with you new in the kingdom of my father. And to him being said, they went out into the Mount of Olives. said to Peter, and I say to thee that in this night before the cock crow, thou wilt deny me thrice. Peter saith to him, Yea, though I should die with thee, I will not deny thee. And in like manner said all the disciples. Then Jesus came with them into a country place which is called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit you here till I go yonder and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to grow sorrowful and to be sad. Then he saith to them, My soul is sorrowful even unto death. Stay you here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell upon his face, praying and saying, My father, if it be possible, let this chalice pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And he cometh to his disciples and findeth them asleep. And he saith to Peter, What? Could you not watch one hour with me? Watch ye and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh weak. Again the second time he went and prayed, saying, My father, if this chalice may not pass away, but I must drink it, thy will be done. 
and he cometh again and findeth them sleeping, for their eyes are heavy. And leaving them, he went again, and he prayed the third time, saying the self same word. Then he cometh to his disciples and saith to them, Sleep ye now and take your rest. The holy hour is at hand, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Behold, he is at hand that will betray me. And as he yet spoke, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the ancients of the people. And he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that is he, hold him fast. And forthwith coming to Jesus, he said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, where to art thou come? Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and held him. And behold, one of them that were with Jesus, stretching forth his hand, drew out his sword, and striking the servant of the high priest, cut off his ear. Then Jesus saith to him, Put up again the sword into its place, for all that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou I cannot ask my father, and he will give me presently more than twelve legions of angels? How then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that so it must be done? In that same hour Jesus said to the multitudes, you are come out, as it were, to a robber with swords and clubs to apprehend me. I sat daily with you teaching in the temple. You laid not hands on me. Now all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then the disciples, all leaving him, fled. But they holding Jesus led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the ancients were assembled. And the chief priests and the whole council sought false witness against Jesus, that they might put him to death. And they found not, whereas many false witnesses had come in. And last of all, there came two false witnesses. And they said, this man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and after three days to rebuild it. And the high priest rising up said to him, answerest thou nothing to the things which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace and the high priest said to him, I abjure thee by the living God that thou tellest if thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith to him, Thou hast said it. Nevertheless, I say to you, hereafter you shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the power of God and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his garments, saying he hath blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? Behold, now you have heard the blasphemy. What think you? But they answering said, he is guilty of death. But Peter sat without in the court, and there came to him a servant maid, saying, Thou also wast with Jesus the Galilean. 
But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest. And as he went out of the gate, another maid saw him, and she saith to them that were there, This man also was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath, I know not the man. And after a little while they came that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for even thy speech doth discover thee. Then he began to curse and to swear that he knew not the man. And immediately the cock crew. And Peter remembered the word of Jesus which he had said before the cock crow, Thou wilt deny me thrice. And going forth, he wept bitterly. Come, all the chief priests and ancients of the people took counsel against Jesus that they might put him to death. And they brought him bound and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, who betrayed him, seeing that he was condemned, repenting himself, brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and ancients, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? Look thou to it. And casting down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, having taken the pieces of silver, said it is not lawful to put them into the corbona, because it is the price of blood. And after they had counseled together, they brought with them the potter's field to be a burying place for strangers. For this cause, that field was called Haseldana. That is the field of blood, even to this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was prized whom they prized of the children of Israel. And they gave them unto the potter's field, as the Lord appointed me. Now upon the solemn day, the governor was accustomed to release to the people one prisoner. Pilate saith to them, What shall I do then with Jesus that is called Christ? And they all said, Let him be crucified. The governor said to them, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. And Pilate, seeing that he prevailed nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, taking water, washed his hands before the people, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. Look you to it. people answering said his blood be upon us and upon our children then having scourged Jesus he delivered them unto them to be crucified And the soldiers of the governor, taking Jesus into the hall, gathered together unto him the whole band. And stripping him, they put a scarlet cloak about him. And plaiting a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head 
and a reed in his right hand, and bowing the knee before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And spitting upon him, they took the reed and struck his head. And after they had mocked him, they took off the cloak from him and put on his own garments and led him away to crucify him. And going out, they found a man of Cyrene named Simon. Him they forced to take up his cross. And they came to the place that is called Golgotha, which is the place of Calvary. And they gave him wine to drink mingled with gall. And when he tasted it, he would not drink. And after they had crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, They divided my garments among them, and upon my vesture they cast lots, and they sat and watched him. And they put over his head his cause, written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. <laughs> crucified with him two thieves, one on the right hand and one on the left. And they that passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads, saying, Va, thou that destroyest the temple of God, and in three days dost rebuild it, save thy own self. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. In like manner also the chief priests with the scribes and ancients, mocking, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God, let him now deliver him, if he will have him, for he said, I am the son of God. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over the whole earth until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some that stood there and heard said, This man calleth Elias. And immediately one of them running took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. And the other said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to deliver him. And Jesus again, crying with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. The temple was rent in two from top even to the bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks were rent and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints that had slept arose and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection they came into the holy city and appeared to many now the centurion and they that were with him watching jesus having seen the earthquake and the things that were done were so afraid saying indeed this was the son of god when it began to dawn towards the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and coming rolled back the stone and sat upon it. And his countenance was a lightning and his raiment as snow. 
And the angel answering said to the women, Fear not you, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come and see the place where the Lord was laid. And the eleven disciples went into Galilee, under the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And seeing him, they adored, but some doubted. And Jesus coming spoke to them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Go therefore, teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all days, even to the end of the world. Charles Boyer again. I'm sure you were just as moved as I was with Miss Barrymore's reading from the New Testament. The story you heard tonight is a true story, hundreds of years old. It's a story that will never die so long as someone lives to read it or to tell it. And that story is especially wonderful for this program, Family Theater, because it is a story of sacrifice. And after all, the story of your family, of any good family, is a story of sacrifice, is it not? What mother has not given up so much for her children? What father has not sacrificed for his wife and family? Keeping a family together, whether that family is just two people, a husband and a wife, or a big family with many children, keeping that family together and happy demands continual sacrifice on your part. Sometimes the things you must do and the things you must do without are almost too much to bear. But you need never despair, because you can do anything with help. And you can always, always get the most wonderful, most powerful help in all the world, just by asking for it. Ask God for his help. His help is so easy to get. Just say a prayer, and say that prayer together with your family. A family that prays together stays together. So tonight and every night, Thank God for what you have and ask him for what you need. And if you have never turned to God before and you turn to him now, this will indeed be a joyful and happy Easter for you and your family. Before saying good night, I want to express our thanks to all of you who have helped make this program possible. A special word of praise to John Slott for his adaptation and to Bob Mitchell for directing the choir. Thanks also to Mel Williamson for directing our play tonight and to our producer, Bob Longnecker. Next week, our stars on the Family Theater will be James Craig and Jane Wyatt with John Charles Thomas as your host. Good night. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt a need for this kind of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the actors and technicians in the motion picture and radio industries who have volunteered their services to fulfill it. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.